Hello everyone, in today's video I'll show you how to improve Trackmania's performance and boost the frame rate so you can enjoy Trackmania 2020 with a smoother experience as well played on low-end devices. So let's begin. Alright, let's now check settings from in-game. So the main thing where we want to find settings is at the top of the screen. Let's press the range button, it will show up pressing it will profile, graphics, sound, input, interface system. Main thing what you want to focus on here is graphics. So first things first, we want to select our main graphics device, either it's an integrated graphics card or external one. So we want to use the powerful one as uh, the option. First of all, for me, it's the, my extended one, which is my the stronger graphics card is selected as the default option. So I can set that as well. We want to lower all of the settings, except when you want to edit things, you want to keep sh uh, shader quality as high. We won't actually set it as high, but uh, it will allow us these options right here, which is a bit weird. If you have set it low, you can't edit this stuff, which is a bit bizarre. So we will turn everything this to low. For FPS, recommend to set this at zero. This will allow you to give maximum FPS so it won't lock the frame rate. If, if you have a, some kind of specific monitor to keep it consistent, then you can lock it. But I would personally suggest to set it to zero as it will basically set to as unlimited. If we go now on the top and we set that, okay, we're setting this to high. Now we have options to the textures and reflections. So these are the tiny details that actually give the biggest boost from the in-game part. So we want to, of course, turn all of this off and uh, it will help us to get those extra bit of frame rate as it will reduce some kind of rendering for waters, reflections, and it will help out in that regard. And for GPU and CPU synchronization, I personally use it as one, but you can test it out and see which one works for you the best. And at the top, let's set this back to low and press apply. Now, let's actually go to one other part where we want to check some things out is system. On the network side of things, we want to reduce the network speed and it will bit postpone some of the processes of map mods loading, other players skins loading, and it will give a faster time to boot up in the servers. However, sometimes when you will pause, pause during the server, it uh, will, might load uh, the other maps. So let's say in a couple of the day, you do the qualifications. During the actual match, you load in, you press escape, it will load in then the map mod. So it won't give the problems of downloading all map graphics right away. And then the second thing is you want to disable all of these. So these are model skins, map mod skins. So you can in general just remove that if you don't want to have troubles with this. But the, oh, either way, I, I would still bit recommend to lowering this and applying it so it goes under your download speed. And sometimes it builds up a lot of uh, unnecessary ghost replays that are saved somewhere in the game as well as some other kinds of uh, data. And so it's best sometimes to press clean cache as it will help up with the boot up speed of the game as well. And now let's check something a bit more advanced that will help you with the biggest improvements. Now the second thing that we want to do is to download Open Planet. I have added the link to the description to download Open Planet. This is an insanely useful third party tool that will not be not only used for the performance improvements, but for many other things just to help out improve Trackmania experience massively. So I'll help you showcase on how you can set it up as well as what will be the plugins that will help you out for a better experience. So first things first, we want to download for Trackmania. So there's a multiple open planet versions for Trackmania 2, Trackmania Turbo. So we want to download the latest version. It keeps getting updated as it's an open source project. You can also contribute it to as well. And you just need to download it. Then on the installation screen, you have to put your games library. For me, it's already found. If you don't know what's your game library, you can go to Uplay then go to properties and then press open folder and it will showcase you what's the current path of the game since you want to have the same path as the installer. While installing you might get a screen like this so this basically means that you are trying to install open planet while the game is running. If you don't have this that means it's all fine the game is closed but if it is show just close the game and press retry and it will help you continue on with the installation. Now if you press continue we can click finish and now it should be installed and now let's uh, boot up the game once again all right now we're back into the game we do have open planet installed but you probably can't see it because we need to activate it so to open up the open planet menu we need to press f3 
and it will give you this top of the bar that will showcase a bunch of settings. So the main part where we want to go is go to plugin manager and open manager. So this is the place where we can see all of the plugins that people have made. It's either just some fancy useful features and or maybe even additional game modes that are doable through the Open Planet tool. So since we weren't focusing on performance, the tool that we want to find is the tweaker. So you can go to the search bar and just write tweaker and it will show you this tool. To put it on the tool, you want to press info. Well, at the moment I have it installed, but there will be a button pressing install. You want to press install and it will be added. So to access the settings, we want to, well, well, let's close this window first. We want to go to open planet, go to settings, and it will show you the tweaker option. And this is our main playing ground. So the main things that with the tweaker tool that will give you is draw distance and level of detail. So first things first, you want to enable them, both of them. So draw distance is kind of self-explanatory. It will reduce the draw distance of the objects that are being rendered. Uh, around this range is what you want to set ideally. Of course, you can test out and play around with it, which is the best one for you. Uh, I would personally suggest using around like 32, 30 range, but that's personal because uh, but reduced draw distance is sometimes a bit weird when you see like objects of the background completely disappearing, they pop in and out. It's uh, quite visually distracting a bit, but on like RPG maps or very dense scenery maps, since you can't really see in that kind of range, a low draw distance really helps out. So I, I on average use around 30, which is cu always cutting off a part of the stadium. So at least some parts of the map are not being rendered in that moment. At the level of detail works kind of dissimilar. You just want to set it to the lowest, you press it enable and that should be it. So at the moment we have set the lower draw distance and we see that there are some parts of the map not being rendered. So let's say on current seasons 01, which is quite dense in terms of visuals, it will at least cancel some of the rendering so it will help you improve the frame rate just like that alone. So one thing that we mentioned previously is that let's say I want to increase or decrease the draw distance even more, it won't update automatically. You want to reboot the map. If you are on servers, you can, let's say, if you're playing during couple day qualifications and you set it down, when it will load to the KO server, then it will be updated. So now we even reduced it way more and it should, it literally stops rendering all of these objects and it helps to improve your performance just like that. Yeah, overall, this is very useful if you are on some kind of low end devices and help, it helps you massively to at least enjoy it again. Hope this guide was helpful, would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and be informed when next Shrek Mania guides and other videos will be coming out. As well, make sure to comment if this guide helped you or ask questions in the comments or my discord for other kind of questions or if there are any other issues. Thank you all for watching and see you all later. Bye bye.